videotape cops. I think that that's going to have the biggest effect when they know that people are always watching them. If you go out there and do that for your fellow resident, for your friends, neighbors, and, and random strangers, hopefully when you get into a situation where a cop is trying to uh, violently assault you or set you up with a, a charge for a crime that you didn't commit, hopefully someone's recording you as well. Like most cases of alleged police abuse, the accuser has his side of the story and the police, for the moment, have a different version of the events. Antonio Beeler was out for the evening as the designated driver with a friend. I observed two cops abusing a female. Police had pulled the female driver over for DWI and then also arrested her passenger. Cop who went up to the passenger side, his name is Robert Snyder, he opens the door and from our view, it looked like they were just having a conversation. And um, sitting in the passenger seat, never opening the car door, never doing anything. We get ready to leave, and all of a sudden we just hear this violent scream. We turn around, and Robert Snyder's yanking this woman out of the car, throwing her to the ground. So me and my friend, we step to the back of the truck, and we pull out our cameras, and we try to take pictures. And then Patrick Oborski, the other cop, comes over and joins in on the fray. And they're just abusing this female. The woman looked at me and she saw me holding my camera up trying to take a picture. And so she cried and begged, you know, please take pictures, please record this. I decided to ask questions and try to take pictures. And then those cops came after me. Once I'm uh, uh, arrested, uh, at that point, they took me to what we call the Batmobile, which is where they have the breathalyzer, and they had me blow, and I asked them why they were making me blow, because I wasn't pulled over, and I wasn't drunk, and I asked them if they were just trying to find a way to charge me with something. But he was probably taken to the Bat bus so that Orborski could do the paperwork down there to complete his DWI arrest. Why would they make him blow? Maybe, I don't know. I don't know. After I blew, um, I started asking the guy what my score was because I wanted him to tell me that it was 0, 0.00. And at that point, he said that I broke the breathalyzer because I blew too hard. I was the first one to ever break the breathalyzer. So then I just got really disgusted. I started laughing at him. Um, you know, just said that this entire thing is a joke. And a Borski comes in back into the vehicle, and the technician <clears throat> looks at him and says, um, well, you know, is this guy in here for a DUI? And Oborski goes, oh, uh, no. And then uh, he looks at me and says, well, what are you in here for? I said, well, I saw this guy uh, roughing, up a, uh, uh, roughing up a female, so I decided to take pictures and ask questions. At that time, Oborski grabs me by the arm, takes me out to the cattle car, the huge truck that they transport drunk people in, and they had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with me where he basically told me, you don't F with police, you know, you don't get in our effing way, and you're going to learn your effing lesson. And then uh, that's the last time I saw him. And by the time I was at uh, Central Booking, I found out what he meant by you don't F with the police, you're going to learn your effing lesson, is that he fabricated a charge, a felony two to ten years, a uh, charge that I spit in his face. <laughs> APD is still refusing to release the video from the patrol unit's dash cameras. Corporal Hippolito tells KITV while the video shows inconsistencies to Beeler's story, he admitted he could not see Beeler spitting. Carlos Amador was walking out of the convenience store when he witnessed what was happening to Norma and Beeler. Amador says he was appalled to learn that Officer Oborski had accused Beeler of being the aggressor and spitting in the officer's face. Beeler, who left military life for an MBA at Stanford before moving to Austin, to teach middle school insists he never did such a thing. An internal affairs investigation found that police were not in the wrong. The fact that the uh, internal affairs could come back and say police broke no policy and they're, they, they've done nothing wrong is uh, it's absurd on its face. 
Monday, Beeler took his case to the Citizens Review Panel. The group of volunteers are tasked with reviewing APD's internal investigations. Beeler wants to see the officers fired and charged and wants to see a new independent investigation. I've shown up at the courthouse probably five times by now, and each time I show up, I sit around for an hour or two, and then they tell me, okay, you can come back on another date. People rallied around me, they helped fund my legal defense, and then people started coming out to me telling me their own personal stories of abuse. And that's when I realized how pervasive the problem was. I knew it was a problem to begin with, but I didn't realize how deep it was and how many lives it touched. And we just rallied up together to launch the Peaceful Streets Project. We've held Know Your Rights training. We've had police abuse complaint departments where we take people's stories of abuse and post it online. We flyered. We've stood outside the courthouse. This isn't a way for us to try to poke our finger in the eyes of the police. What we're trying to do is we're trying to protect each other from criminal cop. And if there was a guy across the street who was videotaping me that night, I think I'd be in a very, very different situation. In addition to trying to educate people about their rights, the Peaceful Streets Project will also encourage citizens to record police activity. On July 14th, Peaceful Streets Project is holding an all-day summit in which they will be handing out video cameras to those citizens wanting to record police activity. Peaceful Streets Project had their Police Accountability Summit today. Uh, with great success. We had uh, lots of people come out. Um, we had civil rights activists, civil, civil liberties activists, uh, we had historians speak, um, a victims panel, and handed out 100 video cameras to activists so that they can go out into the streets and videotape cops. Today I find myself here because I think that I've encountered a group of people that are highly sincere in securing justice for each and every person. Know where your line is, be comfortable, don't put your, don't get into a situation, don't feel comfortable. Always try to be calm, cool, and collected, don't aggravate a situation because, you know, there's some folks you might see tonight that think they have the right to use force against you if you question them, but, you know, I think with a large group of people, you're definitely a lot safer, so, uh, film everything. You want to keep in mind like the people that are going to uh, also be witnesses to what may unfold tonight is not just you and the people on the scene but also people that watch your video. This is a, a battle in the court of public opinion and you know the, the fact that we have cameras we can sort of make uh, transparent what unfolded. We're going to make sure that the, the police know that we're watching them just as much as they're watching us. I hope you're out here protecting people, not harassing people. Boy. What do you guys think about people filming the police? So good. good thing? Right, man. Right on. Doesn't bother me. I can't be free unless you're free and my neighbor's free, you know, because I want somebody to help me if I'm in that situation. So that's why I reach out and help others. You need to do the same thing. You know, be a leader. You can do it. You have the power. Don't be scared. Don't be intimidated. You we have a lot of people from all around the nation that's coming, that coming and calling us, getting contact with us, that want to also do this in their neck of the woods. Everybody has a strength, so all it takes is for everybody to utilize their strength and, and come together, and then we can all get this done. We're hoping to change the culture in this in the city and ultimately in the country and the world where people will stop cowering in fear because of the cops. Uh, just because the cops have badges and guns and they so often assault, uh, violently assault people and take away their liberties, doesn't mean that we have to bow down before them. There we go.